Well, tonight, the University of Illinois will be hosting the premiere of a new work for chamber orchestra and voice called The Song and the Slogan, inspired by the poetry of Carl Sandburg, featuring music by Daniel Stephen Crafts. Uh, the piece was commissioned by tenor Jerry Hadley, who is a graduate of the University of Illinois, went on to greater fame from here. He'll be performing the work tonight. Also serving as reader, David Hartman, uh, former host of ABC's Good Morning America. Uh, he will be here. And uh, there is also a documentary that will feature this work that's now in production here at WILL Television that will include a performance of the song and the slogan as well as some other material about the life and work of Carl Sandburg. That's being produced by Tim Harton. He's directing Allison Davis's writing, and you can see that sometime, probably next year. It will be made available to PBS stations across the country. This morning, we will be spending some time talking about this whole project, about the song and the slogan, and with... Jerry Hadley, who is, has just arrived, uh, the composer, uh, Daniel Stephen Crafts, and David Hartman. So they're all here, uh, and we're pleased to have them. And as, as we talk, of course, questions are welcome. 333-WILL, toll-free 800-222-WILL. Morning. And um, we have some tickets to give away, so we'll, we'll do that later. Yes, thanks. Good thanks morning. for being Good morning. here. Good morning. Uh, morning. morning. Uh. Um, let me start with uh, Jerry. Because uh, the project really did start with you growing out of your interest, I, I gather, longtime interest in Carl Sandburg. Y- you were first introduced to Sandburg's poetry when you were a boy. Oh, gosh. Well, I must have been about five or six years old. My, my uh, great-aunt Marion, who lived in the family homestead farm in, near Osco, Illinois, was um, one of those people who were more a product of the 19th century than of the 20th. And um, she was a great fan of of lots of American literature. She introduced me to to Carl Sandburg by actually taking me to the to the Carl Sandburg birthplace in Galesburg, mm-hmm. and um, somewhere it got tucked back into my my little unformed subconscious. And uh, you know, then then over the course of my adolescence, of course, Sandburg got revisited very often in school, and what have you. And I've loved Sandburg's poetry throughout my adult life, the project came about um, uh, quite simply. I was looking around for for um, texts which I could commission to have set to music by living composers. And um, I was in San Francisco. Uh, Dan has to help me with this. It was 94, 95, 96, something like that. It's been a long time ago, three, four, four or five years ago. Dan was living in... Um, in San Francisco. Uh, I had met Dan when he was uh, uh, the mellifluous uh, voice of what, 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 was the, what were the well, call letters of well, the Well, actually, station? this whole thing began as a radio interview. That's right. Uh, most appropriately enough. Yeah. Uh, RCA called me and said, would you like to do an interview with Jerry Hadley? I said, you better believe I want to do an interview <laughs> with Jerry Hadley. Then they said, oh, well, you're not actually going to meet him. You're just going, it's only going to be a telephone interview. I said, no, that's, that's fine, whatever. And they said, oh, also, you have to get up at six on Sunday morning and do it. I said, well, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not even for him. <laughs> Um, but we did have a long conversation, as I recall, and, and, and you know, hit it off. And, and then Dan sent me some of the music that he had composed. He was quite a prolific composer already. To make a long story short, <clears throat> I um, called Dan when I was in San Francisco three or four years ago, four or five years ago, and said, come on over for lunch. I want to show you something. And I showed him uh, the texts which he subsequently set and um, fashioned the song and the slogan. It was that simple. Mm. And uh, Dan's also a ha- has a dark secret because he's also a Midwesterner <laughs> by well, birth. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I want to say I'm not somebody imported from somewhere else to write about the Midwest. Indeed, I grew up in Michigan, so I'm I'm one of you folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then let me ask you, Dan, um, when you approached writing music to go with uh, with this poetry, how did you how did you even begin? With a feeling, I read the poetry. Actually, Jerry read the poetry to me. He selected Jerry selected the poetry, and he did a wonderful job of picking out <laughs> from many many poems by Carl Sandburg that declaim beautifully but don't really sing. He picked out text that really does sing, 
And when he read it to me, I was very moved by it. And essentially in composing, that's what I do. I feel something, uh, an emotion, and I mean emotion in the, in the most liberal sense of the word, most encompassing sense of the word, and feel it and feel it and get into it and get into it, and eventually it starts to come out as notes. The thing that I love about Dan's music is, I mean, uh, just so that nobody mistakes it, Dan is a is a profoundly gifted musical craftsman who manages to um, trust his intellect enough and trust his training enough to allow his heart to be fully engaged at all times, and that's a pretty uh, unbeatable combination. Well, well it's hard not to music. do with a, with a with a text like that. It's yeah. really hard not to yeah. do. I think, could, could I inject something yeah, at this point, sure. listening to what the two of you just said? <laughs> um, they both do that. Jerry Hadley does that with his voice. Um, I've thought in the past, I've never told him this, but, Uh-oh. Um, but I, in, in terms of classical music, classical singing and operatic singing, or and sometimes quasi-operatic whether, when he's not singing grand opera, but Jerry, to me, is a kind of uh, Tony Bennett and, <laughs> and Frank Sinatra of classical music. And when I, I say that as a compliment, in that he so trusts his musical ability and his capacity as a singer and has the intellect and the heart to allow what what the music means, what the words mean in the music, uh, mm-hmm. that's what comes out of Jerry Hadley. And that's... That's part of Jerry's gift. And what you hear simultaneously, what Daniel just said about how he feels music and tries to write it down, uh, the same thing comes from him. And when I heard this music for the first time, what I felt, not what I intellectually discerned, what I felt from the opening chords of this was a perception of Sandberg and Sandberg's perception of the Midwest and what the Midwest is all about. And not I don't mean now Midwest. I'm talking about traditional, you know, decades, you know, uh, not only decades, but, you know, centuries of Midwest sure. and what's here. But, even but that's not, what they've done. Yeah, even though he's not talking about the Midwest of today, though, I think he's talking about a, a I don't know, a set of values and a spirit that, um, that still permeates the, the lives of all the people that live here. Let, for anyone who might just have tuned in, I should introduce you all again <laughs> for the listening audience. Here in the studio with us, singer Jerry Hadley, uh, David Hartman, and composer uh, Daniel Stephen Crafts. They are all here for a – this mm-hmm. is the world premiere, right? First time anywhere? World First premiere of the song and the slogan. Of right? the song and the slogan. This is <clears> a, a work com- with music by Daniel Stephen Crafts, inspired by including poetry of Carl Sandburg. Jerry is going to be performing, and David will be uh, here as reader happening on the U of I campus tonight. We do have some tickets that we will give away in a little while, so do uh, stay with us. And we also have some music <clears throat> to, uh, to play. Um, let me just, I, I understand that, Jerry, I know because you've got to perform tonight. Right. Uh, that I'm only with you for just a few gonna more minutes. You're going to be here for yeah. a, little, uh, a while. We, we don't want to wear you out. So I just want to make sure that we get maximum mileage out of you <laughs> before you have to go. Um, I'm, I'm, one thing that, that I think is, is true, I think the reason that I think a lot of people in this country don't don't relate to poetry is that they have only seen it on a printed page, and poetry is meant to be spoken out. Uh, so it's not surprising that we would have here a work that, of poetry set to music. A lot of composers have always done that, uh, set poetry to music. But I'm not here uh, sort of also interested in how David approaches this, because here now you're also performing the poetry. You're not, you're not singing like Jerry is, but you're also mm. having to use it Use your voice to to put something across too. How do you, how do you approach doing that? My hope is that um, the listener will just feel and hear Sandberg's perceptions of of the Midwest, of his experience. That's all. Um, likewise, the music, and what Jerry sings, and what Daniel wrote. I mean, this whole evening should evoke Sandberg in the Midwest. And all of us need to get past our, you know, our experience and our technique and our and all of that stuff, so that whoever comes to hear this program tonight 
will sit there and literally be absorbed uh, or absorb Sandberg and the Midwest. That's what we hope happens. But as I mean, you're selling yourself a little short, though, because not only you know, a lot of people know you as a as the the uh, the great ominous of uh, Good Morning America, but don't, don't let us don't Ooh, let us forget that he was also you, that he's also Whoa. an actor. And um, you also have a dark secret that you started out as a singer, so too, are right? you bad. I know. Are I know. <laughs> I well, once, so once Jerry goes, you can, you can do it. I can do a job what on that, what was that, yeah, what, was cool. that, what was that little tune you were in? Was it called Hello, Dolly? Or was that? Like? Was, was that, that it? I thought so. That's it. That, on I, Broadway, I'm not I think familiar with that. Was, uh, no. Uh, yeah. When was that? Uh, well, <laughs> that, that was really It was about history, a right? well-endowed country western singer who goes on to big things oh yes <laughs> yes I, I i think i do recall yeah yeah <laughs> well at some point here we we want to play some music you think now would be a good time to probably a good idea that? since we've been blowing smoke for a while we might as well actually hear some of the music right. all right let's and, do it uh, oh, yeah. and maybe i should say goodbye now and you can play the music and um i hope everybody turns out tonight and uh i will certainly do my best not to screw up and i know that david will do the same <laughs> so so <laughs> you know we'll uh we'll not try that to, we're defensive we, or fearful no 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 about no, the no, 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 no 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 well no, no. i was about to observe that you know it, it was someone who says he just says i'll do my best not to screw up that's you know is that really going to get the people out there? well but i mean that's very sandbergian you know i mean it's a very common man sort of <laughs> right. sort of thing humility appropriate yeah level of humility. you got to get out with the people is my attitude is <laughs> yes <laughs> well, Jerry Hadley, thank you very Thanks, much David. for being here. And folks here in and around Champaign-Urbana will have the opportunity to hear him in this work tonight. And as I said, a little, little bit, we have uh, six pair of tickets that we're going to give away. But at this point, perhaps we should give people an opportunity to hear some of the music that we're, they'll be performing tonight. Pitchfork at a hay rack 
After the eggs and biscuit and coffee, the pearl gray haystacks in the gloaming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a portion of the song and the slogan. It is a new chamber work inspired by the poetry of Carl Sandburg, music by Daniel Stephen Crafts, performed by Jerry Hadley. Uh, the piece will have its world premiere on the University of Illinois campus tonight. This is a, a benefit uh, for the School of Music, by the way, and uh, that I know that there are tickets available, and in a little while here, maybe about five minutes or so, we'll be giving some away. Uh, Jerry was just with us, but he's going to have to Take it easy on the voice because he's got to perform tonight, so he split. But still here in the studio, we have Daniel Stephen Kraft. He's the composer and also David Hartman, who will be uh, serving as a reader for the performance. I did want to mention the players yes. that you heard yes. on that recording, particularly our second soloist, which is uh, uh, cellist Barbara Hedlund, who played those, marvelously played those cello solos that, that you just hear that you just heard. Uh, Barbara has also been the organizational genius behind this whole project, and it would not have happened without her. Mm. Also, uh, the, the players on this are... Uh, uh, the flute player is Dr. James Scott, the clarinetist Solomon Bear, oboe Allison Roebuck, uh, the French horn player is uh, Kaz McCalla, Jordan Kay is the banjo player, Ricardo Flores, the percussionist, and the amazing Eric Dahlheim is our pianist, uh -oh. and Paul Vermel is conducting. Well, we're very fortunate here on this campus to have a lot of very talented musicians. Indeed. To draw Indeed. On. The, you know, I think some people, um, you know, when they hear that this is a new piece of music, might get a little scared. Uh, people do have some difficulty sometimes with with contemporary music uh, because uh, sometimes I think composers are 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 interested perhaps a little bit more interested in the technical challenges of composition than than they are in how people are going to respond to it and this I think this work while it's it's modern uh, is seems to me to be quite accessible. I have been fighting against modernism my whole career. <laughs> Uh, the poetry of Carl Sandburg, to my mind, is far more influenced by folk poetry than it is by the new technical developments of the time. And indeed, he did follow many of the, the new things that were happening. He doesn't use uh, regular meters. He doesn't use rhyme schemes. But still in all, the flavor of it always struck me as far more like folk poetry. That's a genre that really has disappeared from, from contemporary life, although we still have remnants of it. There was a time when everybody could recite a poem or two at, at gatherings. We have a couple of them that still stay with us. "'Twas the night before Christmas went all through the house," and so on and so forth, and... Uh, uh, there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. And there were, there were thousands of these, these poems, folk poems, that everybody knew at the time that, that Sandberg was writing. And that, I think, is, is uh, a great deal of the influence of his writing. And I have tried very much to mirror that in the music so that these aren't folk tunes, but uh, I'm hoping that they will sound like they could, could have been folk tunes. Dan, how much of this is... Uh uh oh, I'm going to my normal mode, <laughs> which is Interviewer to ask questions. Mode. Yeah, That's right. It's okay. But but how mu how much of this is is writing melody something that we lay folks uh, can perhaps not only hear but perhaps understand in our own way. Uh, something that we can perhaps hum if we heard it enough times hum as opposed to just hearing what might sound like squeaking noise to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe I know I'm being unfair here, but you know what I, I think you know what I mean. Well, I've tried very much to my idea of writing a vocal piece, or particularly an an opera, is that you have a number of outstanding melodies that give singers an opportunity to do all the wonderful things that they can do. People come to the opera. I certainly come to the opera to hear the beautiful voices. And if you don't provide a vehicle that allows those voices to show you all the marvelous things that they can do, I, 
then to me it's a kind of a wasted experience. And the same certainly goes for instrumentalists. Uh, Barbara is such a magnificent mm. cello player. Mm. I want to hear what she can do. I want to hear those marvelous tones that she can produce. So I did my best to give her the opportunity to let us hear that. She reached us last night in the rehearsal, uh, David, emotionally. It wasn't just hearing a cello well played. What this piece is all about that Dan wrote and that Jerry sings, I felt from her cello. I didn't just hear it from the cello. I felt it from the cello. Is that the sense you had, Dan? I mean, mean, that's what I got. You know, last night. Well, I'm sure that also one of the maybe one of the advantages of writing for a small group, and I think one of the the things that makes a chamber piece different than a, a piece for a large orchestra is that the it's possible to concentrate on what individual members are playing at the same time that you're seeing it as a whole piece. Absolutely. So I'm sure that for performers, it would be something that they would like because it's it's close to being a soloist and yet. You're, you're playing in, in collaboration with other, other musicians. Well, I hope very much to give everybody in the group something interesting to play, something where they can, they can really shine, which in the large orchestral work is probably, for the most part, not possible. But, but in this, I, I really hope everybody enjoys playing at least certain, certain parts. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the poetry aspect in the second half of the program, Act Two if you will, where Jerry sings a, a variety of, of, of folk songs, music by Kurt Weill, uh, words by Walt, Walt Whitman in some cases, Charles Ives, Aaron Copeland, and a lot of uh, uh, spiritual uh, songs and folk that we remember. The Water is Wide, uh, uh, Black, Black, Black is the Color My True Love's Here, uh, Billy Boy, and even more modern things. I Can't Give You Anything But Love. The interspersed with Sandberg's poems. As Dan mentioned, the sense of of Sandberg uh, not being, you know, all rhyming couplets and that kind of thing, that it's free verse. And that's part of my job reading Sandberg. It, it, It doesn't necessarily always sound like poetry because Sandberg didn't always write like that. He wrote this free form. And and I hope that we're going to get a sense of that free form. Uh, tonight, uh, that it maybe doesn't sound like poetry at times. Or what people expect poetry mm, to sound exactly. like. Yeah. Well, at this point, I have been promising here where we're going to give away some tickets, and now we're going to do that. We have six pair of tickets for the performance tonight. This will be at the Cranert Center for the Performing Arts at 8 o'clock, the world premiere of the song and the slogan. Uh, what you need to do if you'd like to get in on this is give us a call at 333-0852. And we'll take the first six people, and as soon as they're gone, we'll let you know that they're gone. And then what you'll need to do is pick up the tickets at the box office tonight. That's where they will be. So you don't have to come to the radio station. You can just go right to Cranet, 333-0852. We have a dozen, six pair. And then uh, I, I think that there still are tickets, so I think anybody who is interested in attending certainly can, can go and, and, uh, and hear But the they're race. going fast. <laughs> That's right, like hotcakes. <laughs> Um, Dave, I, I know that you have done documentary narration before, and you're going to be the narrator for this documentary that's being produced right. that will include a performance and some other stuff about Sandberg. Have, have you done things like this before, that is, to, to be in a, on a live performance like this? Never. This, no, this is the first time. As Jerry Hadley mentioned earlier, uh, back in the uh, early, mid-60s, I did some musical theater in New York and started and doing a little bit of singing. So I had that, but that's been, you know, 35 years ago. And for the last 25 to 30 years, most of what I've done besides Good Morning America is write and produce and host documentaries, mostly about American history and public affairs and national defense and the Constitution and, uh, you know, a variety of subjects. But when Jerry asked if I would do this, he and I have talked about trying to present the history of American musical theater on television to a broader audience than than the the you know the the small target audience that you might present say opera to. Uh, we haven't solved that one yet. But then when he created this whole idea of the Sandberg and said, you know what, maybe we should do this together in the TV show, and then what evolved from that was to also do do the concert tonight. So mm-hmm. to answer your question. More briefly, no, I've never done this before, and it is very exciting. It really is. And to work with Jerry is just fabulous. And now to meet Daniel and work with him, it's really 
it's a, just a great experience for me. And I, I want to just say at least something about the documentary that people will have a chance to see next year. And I, I think that the concept is 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 an interesting one because, in a sense, what we have here is a performance of the piece. And what what they've done is that they have recorded. Uh, gone into the concert hall and recorded it, but the visuals that you will see are outside. Right, and what Tim, on the prairie? On the prairie, and what Tim Hello, has, Carl has said that he, you know, he's he's hoping that what you get is you get the you get the prairie, the performance, and the poetry all together. And the reason I I'm part of that drill uh, is to do the quote documentary, the biography. Uh, you know, it's a brief biography, but we cover the main you know the main story of Sandberg's life and his meeting his wife Lillian and and the development of his life. So, and that's the uh, you know the whole journey of his life. And so we'll learn about Sandberg and hear his poetry and this wonderful music that yeah. Daniel's written. And it's it's certainly appropriate for the University of Illinois to be involved in this because the U of I Library has the Sandberg archives. It so sure does. A, a great base of material here to do research about Sandberg. And we indeed uh, did uh, shoot a part of the documentary uh, in the rare book area of the library with Gene Rinkel, who is the curator of that uh, part of the library. And uh, and we see a lot of his handwritten work and, and hear some of his work. It's very exciting. It I mean, it was for me to be up there. It's wonderful. Yeah. You want, uh, Daniel, would you like to play some more music? Well, we probably should, shouldn't we? We've been talking so much uh, a little bit. Uh, I have a couple of CDs that are out from from past years, and uh, you might want to look at some of the some of the titles of, of these and have well, a little bit of fun with those. Looking at just earlier that, uh, for example, here here is a piece that's titled <clears throat> "A Meter Maid Attempts to Give a Parking Ticket to an Aggressive Alcoholic Who's Just Arrived with Three More Dimes," or the ever popular "Undiscovering the Joys of Designer Latex." Uh, let's see. What, uh, overhearing a real estate deal while talking on a cordless phone. Uh, on the fast track to a questionable destination. Yeah, that's a story of my life right there. <laughs> there are composers who are dealing with our contemporary challenges. <laughs> well, actually, there's a very long tradition of keyboard works with satirical intent. Certainly, uh, music historians know the Francois Couperin pieces that uh, have, have wonderful titles to them. But I think it actually goes back to the origin of the, of the instrument in, in the Renaissance. So I had hoped to maybe extend that tradition a little mm -hmm. bit. And uh, many of the titles came from my friend, a wonderful poet by the name of Adam Cornford, some of them just came straight out of the newspaper. And in fact, that's the case. You can pick up a newspaper and you can find satire everywhere you look. Someone said, I don't know who it was, but someone said the modern satirist is, uh, is redundant because the encroaching insanity of reality has <laughs> so supersedes any attempted satire that it's unnecessary. Well, what, would you like to pick something from this, uh, this particular? This is, um, or I think Jason Croft is uh, also getting a caller lined up. Now he's, he's in position. We might as well just play the first track of Contemporaries. How about that? And that is the one that I mentioned. This is indeed, this is uh, a piece for flute and piano, and it's titled A Meter Maid Attempts to Give a Parking Ticket to an Aggressive Alcoholic Who's Just Arrived with Three More Dimes. Bye. 
That is music of Daniel Stephen Crafts. Uh, tell us again what the title of the piece is. Well, this was a title given to me by my friend, poet Adam Cornford. A meter maid attempts to give a parking ticket to an aggressive alcoholic who has just arrived with three more dimes. And uh, I guess I should also mention again at this point that the reason that uh, Daniel Stephen Kraft is here is that here on the campus tonight there will be the world premiere of a piece that he composed with, uh, with his music and words by Carl Sandburg. Jerry Hadley will be singing. He was here a little earlier than he had to, to go. We're going to give him a rest. Uh, he's got to rest his voice because he's performing. But also here in the studio, David Hartman, who you, uh, his voice certainly should be familiar to you. He was f- host of ABC's Good Morning America and since has been doing a lot of work producing documentaries. He will be a reader for the performance tonight. And also he will be the narrator of a documentary about Sandberg that will include a performance of the work that's in production now here at WILL and uh, should be available for viewing sometime next year. Uh, I think, David, you wanted to say a little bit more about some other features of the performance tonight because it it will be more than just song and uh, song and slogan. The second the second part of the program um, is is Sandberg's poetry, uh, which I read, but it's bits and pieces of many of his poems: Prairie, of course, River Moons, uh, uh, The People, Yes, Fire Logs, and we get to Lincoln, of course. Uh, God is no gentleman, and a and a moving poem called Mag. There, and it it kind of runs the gamut to give people a feel for you know the breadth of Sandberg. But these uh, poems, pieces of poems, interspersed with Jerry singing a lot of uh, traditional uh, folk uh, tunes, music by Copland and uh, and Ives and Kurt Vile, but also folk things. Uh, black, black, black is the color of true love's hair, and so forth. So y- you get a, f- a feel for America. Americana, if you will, put that in quotation marks. But again, we hope that what is evoked here for for the people in the audience is a feel for not only Sandberg, but Amer- the human spirit. It's an affirmation of the human spirit of America. For me, this is what it is. And I hope that tonight uh, people will, will get that sense from what we're doing. Yeah, I think probably most people don't really know much about Sandberg and aren't familiar with much of his writing and would be surprised at just how edgy a lot of it is. Very. Indeed, indeed. And in fact, Sandberg is part of that great American radical tradition out of which people like Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger and Burl Ives in his, in his early days how, how many How many people are aware that it was Sandberg who wrote the line, Brother, can you spare a dime? So... Uh, there, there is a lot familiar about Samba. We just don't know uh, yeah, indeed, what some uh, of those things indeed. are. Indeed, it is very rich and very, very diverse. Since you, since uh, Daniel's here, we thought we'd take the opportunity to again, you know, perhaps introduce you to a little bit more of his music, uh, because people here they can certainly hear the hear the work tonight. But uh, we thought since uh, he probably will be new to you, we'd give you the opportunity to maybe hear something else. Mm. Now, uh, tell us now. What we're going to play next? Well, this is from an ari- uh, from a CD uh, that I have out called Arias, and it is excerpts from uh, the first three operas that I wrote. This one is uh, a setting of the story of the Pied Piper, which everybody knows, of course. Very briefly, the town of Hamelin is besieged by rats. A mysterious stranger appears and says, I can get rid of these rats. Pay me a thousand guilders. So the mayor agrees, and the piper plays a song, and the rats disappear. But then when he comes to collect his thousand guilders, the mayor says, well, as far as I can tell, the rats are gone. I think we'll give you a nice meal and send you on your way. The piper says, well, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. And he begins to play another tune, and all the children leave the town, marching into the side of a mountain that magically opens up. But at that point, there's a little lame boy who can't walk fast enough and can't make it into the mountain. Well, for purposes of voice contrast, in this version, I changed the little boy to a little girl, who, as we find out at this point, has been the old woman narrating the story that happened a hundred years ago. And at this point, she talks about all the wonderful things that the piper promised that all the other children are experiencing, but she was left all by herself. All right. Well, let's hear that.
That's music of our guest here, Daniel Stephen Kratz. Uh, well, you can tell us again who the, who the performers uh, are. The Soprano is a wonderful San Francisco singer by the name of Karen Carl, and the pianist is Charles Worth. Okay. I, you know, I think uh, probably forever composers have been driving performers crazy because they wrote things that were difficult, sometimes impossible to play, and then the performance had to figure out, how do I play this. Uh, how do you approach writing for the voice, and, and would you say that you that you understand what singers can and can't do, or that sometimes you write something and then you just cross your fingers and hope that it can be sung? I can tell very easily from the expression on their faces when they <laughs> sing something whether or not it works. <laughs> so, but I am blessed having a number of uh, wonderful friends who are marvelous singers who... Uh, Definitely keep me on the straight and narrow whenever uh, whenever I might write something that uh, uh, was less than vocally idiomatic, and that's that's what I try to do. They singers or or any player want something challenging, but they want something idiomatically challenging, not just difficult. Mm-hmm. Awkwardly well, what, difficult. What does that so. mean exactly? <laughs> different things with different different singers, different instrumentalists, whatever. But. Uh, it's, uh, really just doing your best, asking as many questions as possible to understand what people have to do in order to make these sounds Mm -hmm. and to do things that, um, will make them sound good, allow them, allow them to do wonderful things. For example, for singers, you, you, you certainly don't want them, have them uh, up at the top of their register constantly. I mean, that's extremely tiring and it's, and it's not all that interesting to listen to either. You really, as Jerry said to me one time, uh, when I asked him what, what he, uh, what's the, uh, the best way of writing for him, he said, 
take me all over everywhere. Give me a journey that takes me up and down and back and forth and in and out, and that's what I like best. Now, would you would you look at his range? I mean, would you discuss his range and, and the best? Of course, his range is not only big, he's <laughs> solid all the way through it. But with, with a singer, would you ask him, uh, sit down with them at the piano and say, what's your range? Where are you most comfortable? You know, what are the vowels you sing best or consonants of particular, you know, particular notes, let's say, at the top of your range? I mean, do you do all that kind of thing or not? Do you have to? I was certainly uh, about to do that. And Jerry made it very easy for me. He said, you can sing any syllable on any note. And he said, anybody <laughs> who tells you differently to... <laughs> is, is just and making And he would excuses. just say, hey, that's what I do. I mean, so... w- but welcome to the big time. And when you're that good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure. That we're, uh, how do you feel about some uh, a performer who would look at you? You would write a piece. You would say, here you go. They'd look at it. They'd play through it. They'd, they'd, they'd sing it. And they would come back to you and say, look, uh, you've got to change this and this and this and this and this. And I can't do this and I can't do. Then I change that. it. So you'd say then you, I change you're, it. You're fine with that. I have I have trust in those folks. I want to end up with something that is enjoyable to sing. That that as I say is an idiomatic challenge, not not just a ridiculous challenge. I I want that to be. A, I want people to tell me if 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 I've gone wrong somewhere. That's invaluable advice. Hmm. Well, we're coming down to the point here. We have uh, maybe uh, three or so minutes left. We thought well, just to, to finish up, we could play some more of the song and the slogan. So maybe one more time, I'll make sure that people know that the the world premiere of this work taking place tonight on the U of I campus at the Granite Center for the Performing Arts at 8 o'clock. Uh, Jerry Hadley will be the singer. A lot of other very fine musicians from University of Illinois will Indeed. take part. Indeed. Uh, and uh, the, here with us in the studio, the composer, Daniel Stephen Crafts, and David Hartman is here too, and he will be uh, serving as reader tonight. So he will also be performing. Uh, and then we also want you to look forward to sometime in 2001, this documentary that we've talked about, looking at the life of uh, Carl Sandburg. Any last thing we'd like to, like to leave with folks? Well, I'll just tell you where we come in here. At, at, uh, it, it's approximately the middle of the piece, and it's uh, rather a quiet, introspective part where we just hear Jerry and the pianist Eric Dahlheim after we hear a wonderful cello solo by Barbara Hedlund. All right, let's hear shall foot it down the roadway in the dusk where shapes of hunger wander and the fugitives of pain go shall foot it in the silence of the morning see the night slur into dawn hear the slow great winds the sky the broken boulders by the road shall not commemorate my ruin regret shall be the gravel underfoot And again, that's uh, Jerry Hadley performing in the song and the slogan, and you can hear a full performance of the work first time tonight at 8 o'clock on the U of I campus at the Cranert Center for the Performing Arts.